Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. We're just going to get right into it. Today in this video, we're going to talk about three ways that you can make some extra money before the holidays. All right, we're going to take advantage of this before people jump back into coin collecting. Um, as you guys know, as far as a seasonal cyclical pattern, people generally get out of the hobby during the summer to pursue vacationing, different types of events, that sort of thing. And they really don't spend a lot of money in coins or they just get out of coins altogether so they can enjoy the finer times in life. Um, we're not quite there yet to where people are beginning to come back in. Um, we are in August, toward the latter days of August. You know, September is just around the corner. Labor Day is just around the corner. But it's worth mentioning that generally around the kind of like middle of September, end of September, that's when you begin to see activities spike up. And that's where we see a lot of things happening in the auction world when it comes to numismatics. So let's go ahead and jump into what I would say is a no-brainer. And that's flipping those, uh, those bank boxes or rolls. Now, you have to be kind of uh, uh, intentional in what you're doing here. Um, first and foremost, I mean, people are selling bank boxes and they are generally selling for over face value. A penny bank box, for example, is $25. Uh, however, there is a way of marketing these where you're not selling it for this cheap, all right? And then check out the shipping. $15.50 seems very pricey when you isolate that total amount as its own itemized line for every listing. What you wanna do is to put it all together, ladies and gentlemen, and that's in integrating both the actual buy price of the item you're selling and incorporating shipping. So that way when you go to say one of these listings where it offers free shipping, that just seems a lot more enticing to your customers. So when you go to sell these, what I like to do is incorporate both the shipping and the price of the item that you want. Now you gotta make sure that you're making a profit. Um, and bank boxes seem to be kind of kind of performing really well. Uh, I would do a buy it now price, much like you see here. And for a $25 box of pennies, um, considering that we are not quite into the fall season, I would certainly do $74.95 shipped. Okay, that's gonna take care of the eBay fees. That's also going to take care of the um, uh, shipping as well. Shipping, go ahead and throw this into a medium-sized box. Pack it really well. Um, use lots of tape. Uh, and there's ways of getting cheap tape, obviously. But you can profit anywhere, anywhere from $20 to $25 per $25 box by selling these. Now, it's not just about regular bank box of pennies. Okay, but you can also sell um, sealed bank boxes of one specific date, like 2021 uh, PND. Minted coins are still selling for a good amount of money. And um, it seems to be the choice of a lot of like cherry pickers that are trying to identify brand new unattributed varieties and errors. Um, and, you know, if you go to certain listings like a 2020 Denver, which Denver coins sell for a lot less than p min coins um although i'm putting my foot in my mouth because there's years 2021 p for uh fifty dollars and fifty cents shipped um selling these for this amount of money is too low all right so there are ways of making more money uh, obviously the further back you go let's say if you had a, a sealed bank box of 2015 p lincoln cents those will sell anywhere from one to two hundred dollars because they have some pretty nice doubled dies to find in there. But as you can see, up and down the list, there's a lot of potential. Of course, people are selling bank boxes full that are rolled with wheat cents in there as well, and that's why those are selling for a couple hundred bucks. The the buy price on um, uh, on wheat cents has been going up quite a bit. I used to be I was able to buy a five thousand count box or box or bag of wheat cents for around 200 to 220 dollars and now for a 25 dollar bank box you're already at 200 dollars so this is also another way of making money is by recognizing the trends 
uh, on the secondary market of things of this nature. So money to be made. I would say the higher the uh, denomination, the more money that you'll make. Uh, but also take, take into consideration, if you have those full bank boxes of a singular date, like here's a 75D BU Lincoln Penny box, $25 face. For look at that, $165 shipped, all right? Um, and 1975D is not a special date at all. There's really not a whole lot to look at in there. And um, that's why I'm saying that things like that, if you're able to source them, whether, you know, your local coin dealer has weird, quirky stuff like that, where you could buy it for like 50 bucks and then flip it and make a hundred dollar bill on a lot of these listings. I, I see it all the time. Even I've done it. And uh, I don't see why you guys can't do it either. If you have the resources locally, where, again, this is all obscure stuff, stuff that generally a coin dealer won't have their front and center for you to just gawk at. You're going to have to ask them, hey, do you have any sealed rolls of, you know, a whatever, a, in, insert your denomination of choice. And I've seen people whip out, or these coin dealers whip out all sorts of weird stuff. Um, uh, sealed bank rolls of silver dimes, and, you know, they're all BU and, yeah, it, it can get pretty crazy, and um, surprisingly, some of these dealers undersell these rolls. Um, but it's not just about actual full bank boxes. Like I said, actual rolls, there's quite a bit of a market for that. And um, it's actually going to pour into the one of my other um, uh, things that you could do to make money um, on eBay uh, before the holidays. So it's going to be a nice little tie-in to go from one to the other. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that uh, ship here sooner or later. But, you know, yeah, this is, this is a good one. This is uh, actually one of my favorite things to do if I can get a hold of them. Now, some would say that we are back into a coin shortage or coin recession where there's, where there's just not enough supply out there. And I seem to think, well, that's not, that's not a supply issue it's a people issue because there's a lot of people that aren't necessarily working because they're still claiming unemployment checks you know either the federal or the state checks that are being handed out so um that's something that will work itself out in due time uh when these programs end and people have to actually go to a place to work to to make their living um but this is a good one right here. So if you're looking to uh, to make some extra money, maybe not just during the holidays, but any time during the year, because, you know, again, you could find some of this obscure stuff uh, any time, all right? It's it's not just going to be um, kind of singled out during the holidays or what have you. Um, and then, you know, there's some of those rare rolls, uh, nickel roll. Uh, of course, you guys know 2009 is a rather tough date in both P and E, more so Philadelphia rolls, uh, but Denver's as well. So here's a, a original bankroll BU 2090. Again, sourcing these is going to be paramount in your success. Um, you just don't stop at one type. You, you diversify the different types of things that you could find out there. Uh, but for this, this is like $47. Last time I checked in a 40 coin roll, there's $2 space. So that is a lot of profit to take advantage of on such a rare date. Um, it's crazy. It's like not even 12 years old, and then we're already knighting it as like a rarity. And it kind of is. It's got one of the lowest mintages, uh, bar none, uh, out of the modern era of U.S. coins. So it would only seem natural that you would try and source some of these. Now, even selling them for only $26 shipped, still presents quite a bit of profit you know so if you came across a full bank box of these nickels i would open up the box and just sell them as singular rolls you're going to make so much more money that way and uh, if you're lucky enough to find them that that's going to be the deal right there uh here's a p and d set uh five of each nickel so there's 10 coins all together for 28 dollars. you can even break it down that way if you wanted to but there is going to be a lot of different ways uh, to to flip and, and make money off of uh, sealed bank boxes and rolls. And these, depending on where you're at, are probably quite available. 
If you're at a coin shop and you've never thought about asking your coin dealer if they have sealed anything, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be coin from like the last five years. Pick them up, all right, and then make strike a good deal off of them, and then you will do well when you go to sell them, all right. And you're just going to see the profits just kind of roll in, you know. And that's a really nice feeling. All right, so. Um, that's number three on the list. We got three total, uh, so I call that one bank on it, you know, um, make it bank off of the bank boxes and rolls. Another one that I like doing, and I'm not afraid to say this because I'm sure there are going to, there are going to be a couple people that actually do this that are going to say, man, he just had to say that. Um, but it's called uh, slab flipping or regrades. And it's real simple. You're going to source out some of the um, some of the coins that are already graded, but they're graded in the oldest generation of holder. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because some would say that the grading standards from back in the 80s way more strict than what they are today. And what people like to do is they'll go out and they'll find and locate you know a cache of uh, old PCGS Rattlers, you know, generation 1.0 to 1.2. You could go out there and look for the ultra rare doily holders, which were only released for like two months back in 1989. And that is uh, generation 2.0 in the PCGS slab gen generation pops. But people will take and buy these graded coins and then they'll turn around and either resend them back to PCGS for a reconsideration of the grade because if you have like an older coin that's graded at like a mint state 65 and it's worth $800 but if it bumps up to a 65 plus it'll take that same coin and make it worth $1,500 that's $700 profit that you can make all right a really great well first of all one of the best resources to use is going to be the PCGS Museum of Coin Holders. It's actually on PCGS's website. Uh, actually, let's just go home. I'll show you how to get there so that way you guys are in the know. But we go under services right here and you're going to go all the way to collecting resources. So I think this is where it's at. Um, and that's from the main splash page. But if you scroll all the way down through all this stuff, you're going to get to the PCGS museum of coin holders it's actually going to have a timeline progression of all the holders ever produced by pcgs starting with the earliest way back in 1986 the generation one generation 1.1 and generation 1.2 are all two-piece rattler style of holders so when you get the coin in there and it's sealed the coin isn't completely uh, sealed to the edge of that plastic holder it'll actually rattle around uh, to the point where the coin will rotate over time um and that's that's where it got its name from rattlers is the coin rattles in there but you have these three uh different types here and um really the big difference is going to be the slab label um i i find a lot of the gen 1.2s i don't see a bunch of 1.0s and 1.1s but those are, are a great uh, candidate to spec and buy out and either turn around, flip it, like especially if these are being sold uh, through regular auction, um, it's going to sell for a lot less than what the actual market commands. Um, and that's why you would buy these and then turn around and just relist them on eBay at double the price of what you paid for it. So if you, let's say this 1882 Morgan dollar you spent $500 on in this Rattler holder you can turn around and flip it because it is in a early generation PCGS holder turn around and sell for like $999.99 uh, and make $500 off of something like that but the regrade part of it is extremely attractive to a lot of people also now it would hurt deep in the soul if you picked up a really nice coin in a Rattler and you decide hey you know what I'm gonna go ahead and um, have it regraded in the newest holder and it's going to come out like a grade point uh, higher on the scale um, but you know you're also uh, eliminating the older slab and uh, sometimes sometimes you have to look at it depending on the coin 
that's in there, uh, it may not make any sense at all to regrade these at PCGS. One of my favorites is the doily holder. This is extremely rare, and you don't see too many doily holders out there. Um, we are going to go ahead and type it in. And doily, I mean, is just the pattern of this slab label. All right, it's got the doily pattern, kind of like what your grandmother used to put on their side table with a lamp on it. You know what I mean. Um, but if we typed in PCGS doily, I had actually already typed it in there. You're going to see that there's only 25 examples um, that had sold within the last 90 days. Uh, if we went and um, took it off, completed sold listings, as you can see, it's crazy. Here's a 1937S Washington Quarter PCGS Mid-State 63 CAC doily label for $449. I mean, is that really a $449 point? No. The doily holder, the CAC sticker, all these things combined made this coin worth a lot more. It's only a 63. So um, there's the power of the value of these doily holders. But as you can see, super big values. Here's a 1923, just a good old basic plain high minted piece dollar mid state 62. I mean, really? I mean, that's not really a great grade. But it's in that doily holder and that CAC sticker as well for 299 shimoleons, which is a lot because in hindsight, that's a $40 coin in Mint State 62. Ask me how I know because I'm currently collecting peace dollars in Mint State 61. But this is a great opportunity. You could pick up some rather marginal coins, some higher minted stuff. I mean, here, here's a... 58D Roosevelt dime and a doily sample slab. They're, these are still out there, ladies and gentlemen, to be had, and it's worth a lot of money. This uh, sample slab is extremely rare, and it probably sold for about $1,000. That's how rare they are. So these are extremely good flips. If you're able to find the doily slabs, these are the most valuable just based off of the slab alone. Some would say, Buy the coin, not the graded holder. In this particular case, you might have to buy the graded holder and not so much the coin. The coin at this at this particular juncture is irrelevant because when you have coins that are worth $150 in a slab that has a doily label and it sells for nearly $500, that says that says a lot. That's more than just the you know the coin itself. It's the history of the grading standards through PCGS that first kicked off um, the grading revolution. So as you can see, these coins, lots of common dates, selling for many multiple hundreds of dollars. This is a really great opportunity to make some money before October rolls around. All right, and there's no better time to do that than right now, you know, where some of this stuff has remained untouched at your local dealers or at the coin shows you could buy these and literally maybe 2x your money 1 1.5x your money i mean that's a pretty big deal and some of them do get rather expensive all right so that is um slab flipping and regrades uh take advantage of it while you can the general supply is going to drop quite a bit as time goes on and after people watch this video so go figure uh, so yeah, yeah, that's that. You guys took a look at the PCGS Museum of Coin Holders. Be sure you bookmark that. I think it's really cool. Uh, you can even pull it up on your phone as well, which is nice. And then finally, the last thing that I would say would be a good idea to do to make money ahead of the holidays is going to be what's called target buyouts or simply market manipulation. We are going to identify a few coins that are quite scarce in the marketplace that either not a lot of people are touching or buying uh, because they just don't know about them or popular coins um, in certain grades that, that nobody's really paying attention to. Case in point, any West Point uh, circulation rarity quarter of 2019 and 2020 in a specific grade might be your target of choice, okay? And that grade is going to be PCGS. Mid-state 67, not exactly the highest graded coin um, 
and we're going to type in 2020 W quarter mid state 67. Let's see what we got here. Uh, only 14 had sold within the last 90 days, which is quite small and uh, not exactly a cheap coin. But we are talking about the higher end of the curve. Uh, you're going to have your best bet making the most amount of money on 2019s because that's when a lot of people were grading these. By the time 2020 rolled around, you got to the last like three releases from 2020, people didn't grade them that often. So that's why a lot of these coins sell for over $1,000 in most cases. So if we typed in 2019, so that way I bring you guys back down to earth a little bit, you're gonna find that there's a, a similar amount of sold sales at only 13, but you're gonna see that a lot of these have sold for a lot less money, all right? Half or sometimes even a third of the price. And then there's gonna be cases where you come across stuff like this. This is a San Antonio missions that someone had picked up for only $130, which is a huge rip considering just the low pops of that particular coin. But this, this is a great example of a targeted buyout. You know, you buy out a certain grade where there's not too many of them, and you literally obliterate the market. And when you take out the market for a coin in that price range and there's none to be had, people were going to have to go to the next level. And what you're going to do, and this is only if you have like some extra capital, you know, extra maybe $2,000 to $3,000, you could do something like this, is that you're going to take out all of the least expensive coins of that particular grade out of the secondary market and just hold on to them and let the market kind of like escalate up to its true potential. Like if you bought out all of the 2019 West Point uh, San Antonio Missions quarters, you take them all out of there at 130, these things are gonna go up in value. The seller, uh, Silver Eagle Store, only has two more available at this grade. Now, I'd like to see those sold out. I might actually buy one myself because that is uh, rather cheap for a Mid-State 67 West Point quarter. Um, but you go on down the list. I mean, here's another one right here that's in current auction with one day, four hours left. And you just, again, you're going to identify the cheapest coins of that particular uh, uh, state or uh, national park and just go go to town like buy them all up buy all of these up I would even put in a best offer maybe do like 110 or something like that and take these all out of the marketplace and then you're just gonna see the prices jump up if they double in price within six months you're gonna turn around reintroduce your coins back out into the marketplace and sell them at $250 so that's what they call market manipulation um, it's easier to do when there's not a whole lot of supply of a certain coin. You know, if there are, say, 100, 200 of these Mid-State 67 San Antonio missions, now we're going to be talking a completely different story. I would not buy all 200 of them at $130 a pop because it's just too many of them. Stay within the, um, the, the lesser expensive. And the San Antonio missions has been that one coin that, that has consistently graded as 67. But as you can see, there's not a whole lot of them out there. You know, if you had $1,000, you could buy out all of the Mid-State 67s. And then there are other people that have actually posted Mid-State 67 coins for $500. Okay, and then they got the max certification. You could do all the extras to help beef up the value of that coin before you reintroduce it into the marketplace which is smart that is a smart idea and you know that's how you do it that that is a, a targeted buyout you're focusing on one coin you're you're focusing on a roll you know like i talked about earlier in the show 2009 nickel rolls if you bought out all of them that's on ebay and just held on to them and as as people begin to like put put up listings and they're still reasonably priced snatch those up too because they are going to disappear. And the thing you all guys ought to know about sealed roll and box inventory is that they are treated like assets. People will buy them. They won't rip them open. They'll keep them sealed. 
okay? And then they'll just store them for 10 years, 15 years. They're gonna be worth a whole heck of a lot more money when it's time to sell. So, you know, that's uh, a little something I picked up along the way from uh, crossovers into like sports cards and that sort of thing. Uh, when you, tar you do a targeted buyout of uh, something specific where there's not a whole lot of them on the marketplace, then you could really, really play around with the value of these coins over the long haul. And it's fun. I I've done it a few times and I've done really well. You know, if, if you want, I mean, I thought I saw like maybe seven listings of a Mid-State 67 San Antonio Missions that you could go and buy right now, take it completely out of the market, and people will be forced to buy the $200 ones, the $300 ones. You get the big picture, but um, it's a lot of fun. It's a great way to, uh, to make money uh, because there is scarcity. You know, it's not an underhanded thing to do. When there is already scarcity within an asset, it makes it that much more appealing to target for a buyout. And then when you do that sort of thing, it's true, it, yeah, it manipulates the market, okay, after a certain while, but the coins are scarce to begin with, all right? It's not likely that you're going to see another 50 mid-state 67s enter the marketplace at $200 a pop. It's unlikely. There's not that many out there, and that's why things like this is great. Another good idea, uh, a few other good ideas, buying out the, uh, the uh, Botanic Gardens, um, commemorative set with the, the nickel, I think that's what, 2007. The March of Dimes set from 2015 with the March of Dimes commemorative and the two dimes that are ultra low minted. Buy those sets out. There's not a whole lot of them out there. And if you're scalping all of the those inventory at the lowest price level, it's going to make all of the higher price ones more attractive to people that actually want it. But I love the, the example with the West Point quarters at a certain grade. And 67 is a premier grade of this quarter. Don't get me wrong. Um, if you did a targeted buyout on some of the lesser grades, there's just a ton of them. Just try doing a targeted buyout on 2019 West Point quarters in a 65. And you're going to find that there is a ton of them out there. All right. So mid-state 67 is kind of like my sweet spot. I, I like that grade. Of course, you can't really touch the 2020s in a mid-state 67 for anything reasonable. Uh, but those are going to continue to go up as well. Uh, we saw one example that graded in at 69 that sold for $70, $75,000. That just kind of gives you an idea of the direction in which these West Point quarters are going to go towards. So why not kind of aid it along to, uh, to uh, greatness I guess, and make a boatload of money in the process. Because five years from now, guess how much of this particular quarter I highlighted here is going to be in five years? Thousand bucks? Fifteen hundred dollars? These are just wild guesses. By the way, I'm an educational channel, okay, and not a financial one. So take take what I have to say with uh, not too much of, uh, you know, seriousness. Uh, because I still do live in my grandma's backyard shed with the um, with the family pet. And it's not a dog or a cat. So, anyways, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, definitely consider some of this if you're looking to make some extra money. Probably the easiest, most accessible thing to do right now, where you're playing with house money and you're selling them, are those bank boxes. And again, check out your local dealers because, you know, someone will come in with some random 2009 Lincoln Cent formative years box that they, that the dealer has decided, oh yeah, we're just going to give you $25 for it, you know, or you can take it to the bank uh, and then you could buy it for 50 and then turn around and sell it for 150 and make a C note. It's a lot of fun. So we'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. Am I missing any other methods of making money? You could do the whole U.S. Mint thing, sure. You know, there's certain products that are selling for a lot of money. Uh, but those are timed in the marketplace. These right here, you could do all year round and be successful at it. Well, that's going to go ahead and do it, guys. Long enough video as it is. Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, any more ideas uh, to make some extra money 
for the holidays. I uh, don't know if you guys need the cash. You know, I think we're all independently wealthy. Um, can't really say that for me. <laughs> uh, when, when you pay the bills, you are broke. Uh, but anyways, that's going to go ahead and do it. I'm Sean with Blue Ridge Silverhound. Appreciate your time and your support for my channel. And uh, yeah, I hope to hear you hear from you guys real soon. So you guys take care. Coinholics, we are discovering together. All right. So long.